sync it to to both. Jeremy, there we go. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Listen, folks. You've seen him before. He's back for more. My boy Jeremy. Can't get enough, Claudio. Can't can't, can't, can't get, get enough. Can't get can't, enough. Can't get enough. Can't get enough. That's not even a song, but I just went with it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, so Quadcast Nation. I wanted to get Jeremy back on the show because right now this cat is changing the world, man. I saw him. You know, I saw you uh, on. You showed up on my IG several times, but the thing that has got me really excited was the work that you were doing with with Breathless. Mm. This podcast series on cf and the challenges around there so before jumping into it first of all how are you doing welcome back to the show dude uh i'm doing amazing i mean it always feels good to be on uh, on any any program with you whether it's uh whether it's my show or your show i love just hanging out with you or fucking r- running into you at the airport at the airport like, <laughs> uh it's always a pleasure and i'm, I'm doing great man i'm i'm it's been a it has been a unbelievably uh, wild past couple of years, and mm. uh, and all things considered, I'm doing I'm doing really good. So. Can I tell you, you you look like you look in shape too. You look like you got a little bit of sauce on you, boy. Like, oh, look at this. Look, at this. yeah, that's what I'm talking. Those that are audio, I just witnessed a six pack, <laughs> and his biceps are are, are real. But yeah, gonna, you you I, look saucy. I'm gonna, th- you know what? So here, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I I am, oh. I am uh, a bit saucy, uh, and it's because <laughs> I, it's because I. Oh, so so I'll give you some context. I started a new drug that has like taken the the medical world by storm. Uh, if if you're if you know if listeners are unfamiliar, I live with cystic fibrosis, uh, genetic disease. It affects pretty much every organ in the body that you know produces mucus. It's mostly known as a lung disease. And, uh, and so I've had this, I was diagnosed at 18 months, had it my whole life. Um, and one of the big parts of CF is that uh, the malabsorption is like a big issue. So like gaining weight was like, I could never, you know, maintaining weight was kind of the key. And even that was hard. And uh, this new drug came out, Trikafta, which I'm sure we'll talk about uh, in depth, but <laughs> I started this drug. Quadro, I started this drug. I was I was 138 pounds. Two two months into taking it, I I, I skyrocketed up to 178 pounds. Well, I I was I started for the very first time in my life getting, I I started getting fat. I started getting fat. I started getting overweight, and I was like, this is awesome, <laughs> dude. I'm getting fat. This is sick. And then about two weeks into that, I was like, okay, novelty's worn off. Uh, <laughs> I gotta I gotta make some changes. So uh, my my colleague, my co-host Brian on Sick Boy, him and I have been uh, just hitting the gym every five five days a week, every day, and I'm feeling fit. I'm feeling I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling great, man. I'm feeling really good. Oh man, this is this really brings joy to my soul because if anyone, <laughs> and I know you love the gym. I know you're a big. Oh, you're, you yo, love it. if yeah. you flex some people, I'm flexing yeah, right here. Let's go. Bam, bam, bam. Here we go. <laughs> but uh, the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, I think I think a good place to start, actually, because I think it will, we'll get into the to the drug was was the breathless was the breathless series because mm-hmm. I there's so many layers to the CF journey that you you guys really illustrated, but maybe just give us some context, like what what was the breathless uh, podcast series all about? Yeah, yeah. So we so you know. For the last uh, almost 10 years, uh, me, Brian, and Taylor, uh, two of my best buds, have been, um, we've been working on this podcast called Sick Boy that kind of took a life of its own, and uh, and it, it started off where we would just be, it was the three of us having these like frank, open conversations with folks that are living with any kind of illness, just the lived experience, uh, the patient experience, and it, it, over time that evolved, we started including conversations with uh, not only people that are, are patients or living with some sort of struggle or illness, uh, but we also started including conversations with like people like you, you know, like people under the umbrella of healthcare providers, healthcare professionals, 
um, whether that's you know a physician or a researcher or you know an occupational therapist just to get just to kind of help bridge that gap between the patient and the, the the clinician we by doing so we sort of we sort of just found ourselves um, kind of planted in the healthcare space in Canada um, primarily from the standpoint of like patient advocates or uh, sort of experts in the field of communication when it comes to speaking with patients and so you know again this whole thing started as like a joke and we didn't ever anticipate that years later we'd be where we are now um, and so you know we, we're also podcast geeks we love we love sitting on mics we love listening to other shows and we had this idea of like you know we, we wanted to flex our creative muscles get outside the box a little bit and we wanted to try our hand at not just like a a sit down long form conversation podcast uh, but instead to create something a little bit more highly produced a little bit more narrative driven a little bit more um, like human centered from from the standpoint of of, of you know creating a series uh, that tells a story a narrative arc from episode one to you know whatever six or eight um, and so we thought you know what let's just like throw it out there ask some folks if they would be interested in having a podcast uh, because we think that if you're if you're you know if you're an organization if you're a business if you're anything like that the people are not interested in in social media it's it, you know there's nothing to retain it's all too fast um, mm -hmm. email marketing campaigns are I mean uh, who's clicking through an email newsletter I, I have no idea and then traditional media like you know you go on global news or something you've got five minutes to hit your points because they got to hit a commercial and it's it, you know there's no substance so we reached out to Cystic Fibrosis Canada, which is a, the charitable organization that essentially, you know, I owe my life to. And we said, hey, guys, you know, there, I, we know that you guys are going through a massive transition right now uh, with the induction of Trikafta. It's kind of sh shaken the entire CF community. Um, and so we want to create a series uh, that explores what cystic fibrosis is and where it's come from how we've ended up where we are today and what does the future look like for patients and caregivers uh, that are affected by cf and of course they hopped on board immediately and so we started creating the series that uh, that we titled breathless and we produced it uh, six episodes we launched it in may uh, for cystic fibrosis awareness month and the feedback was like I mean, it was, it was overwhelming. You know, it, it was, it was a, it was a project that I can honestly say I'm, I'm the most proud of out of my entire career of being a, a, an artist. CF Canada is like super stoked on it. Um, and we, we essentially just explore all those things, what it is, uh, you know, what CF is, where it's at, where it's going. But it's told from the from my standpoint. I'm the I'm the narrator of the show, and throughout the show, we weave in these characters that are patients of CF. We weave in characters that are, you know, the, the chief scientific officer at CF Canada. We bring in fertility experts to talk about how CF and fertility. You know, we even talk to the 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 two founders of CF Canada. These this couple that are the fucking cutest cutest couple uh, in their 90s that uh you know it, i mean the fact that we even got them on a zoom call was was miraculous because it was you know th i don't think they're they're very tech savvy but it, they were just the most delightful folks and um yeah we launched the show it it, it was it was a wild success and we're hoping to just kind of continue this momentum and keep pumping it out um but uh but yeah it really tackles it tackles so again, it, it tackles, you know, the, the what is CF, where has it come from and, and where is it going? But the big part of the show really is taking a magnifying glass and really looking at how Trikafta, this, this drug that has completely changed the lives of thousands of Canadians affected with CF um, for the better, 
but also for I'm not going to say for the worst, but for the for the for the confusing and the challenging, because uh, although this this drug, you know, from my perspective, Trikafta has literally given me a second chance at life. Um, you know, I'm 36 right now. Uh, Quadro, before I was taking Trikafta, I was thinking it would be astonishing to see my 40th birthday. And now two years on the drug, um, it's looking like I'm probably, you know, unless I get hit by a bus or, or choke on a donut or something, uh, I'm, I'm likely going to see my like 80th birthday, uh, which is phenomenal. But also, it is a absolute mind trip uh, that is that I don't think a lot of people consider that aspect of it. I think when you first hear about it, it's like, oh my god, that's amazing, and it is. But it's also really challenging and really confusing, not just for myself, but for a lot of folks who are living with CF and who have now been given the second chance. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it. Well, first of all, I can't, I'll just say selfishly, knowing what I know about CF, seeing you over the years, it gets me a little bit weepy eyed to think, well, I don't know why, I'm, maybe I'm tired, but it gets me a maybe little weepy. The Edmonton Oilers lost last night. Yeah, I yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to blame it on. But I get a little bit uh, weepy eyed to think of what that has brought to you and to so many Canadians. Like, like we'll get into the complexity of like a, how much of a mind like how it can mess up with your identity but just at a high level when you think you've spent so much of your life thinking that you know your your time on this earth is going to be significantly limited compared to the people sit, that you're sitting beside for over the years and have that door open to say like the the possibilities are now now just like the, the guys to my left and to my right yeah. is is absolutely incredible okay. it is incredible but yeah before jumping into that I, like just to get a, a bit more context in terms of breath breathless did you get a so there must have been a, a lot of opportunities to connect with people with shared experience mm -hmm. and what i just from a personal level jeremy i just always w wanted to hear like we haven't talked about this before i don't think but what's that like when you talk about some of the many concerns and many fears that you have and you got somebody that whether they're a few years younger or older whatever like you these are your people and and to connect in that way what was that like in, in terms of uh being part of the journey yeah, I, you know what? It was uh, the, it, it was that was a, a kind of an unexpected um, byproduct of creating this show was was the just the feeling of um, the feeling of connection with with a with the patients that live with CF because there's a number of them that that are featured on the show. Um, you know, what, one of the interesting things about cystic fibrosis it's such a fascinating disease. It's such a bizarre weird intricate disease with all these you know it, it, yes you, you you have a, you you know your lungs are filled with mucus you're 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 coughing all the time you're susceptible to like pneumonia if you catch a cold because it's it because of the the buildup of the mucus in the lungs and yeah you, you know your your digestive system cannot break down the food properly because your pancreas doesn't produce enzymes and your your digest digestive tract doesn't have the ability to to absorb nutrients properly but there's all these other elements of CF that are really bizarre and like really, really fascinating. Um, you know, like like uh, people with CF have two to five times more salt in their sweat. So, you know, we taste really salty, which is one mm. of the things that a lot of parents will like first notice about their baby. Uh, like my dad, my dad, before I was even diagnosed, they were trying to figure out what's going on with Jared. You know, Jared, like he's he's all messed up. I was like, you know, 18 months old. And his buddy was like, it sounds like CF. Uh, and my dad was like, you know, didn't know what CF was. And his buddy, he was like a work colleague. He was like, you know what? Take Jer home, give him a bath and pull him out of the bath and, and dry him off real well and just lick the back of his neck. And if he tastes like salt, I bet you, I bet you that's it. I bet you he's got CF. And so my dad did that that night, 
licked me. And the moment he tasted my skin, he was like, he was like, oh, shit. This kid's got CF. You know, he was like, he tasted like, uh, he tasted, what, what did he say? He said, you uh, tasted like salt beef, <laughs> which is like a Newfoundland. And my, my whole family's from Newfoundland. He's like, oh, that's, a, cr- that's an actual thing, salt yeah, beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salt okay. beef is like a Newfoundland de- uh, delic- uh, delicacy. He was like, God, God damn, Jesus Christ, Jared, I'll tell you right now, I licked, your, licked the back of your neck, and I tell you, you taste just like salt beef buddy and i knew it right there so and that's literally how my dad and then he took me to the hospital and said i think he has cf they tested me and 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 he was right um but one of the other interesting little sort of tidbits about cf is that a number of decades ago they came to realize that because of the way that our lungs hold on to mucus we are susceptible to bacteria that doesn't affect your typical person without cf so like Quajo, if you if you went to the grocery store and you started handling onions to figure out which one you want to buy to throw in your guac tonight, and you touched an onion that was a bit off, a little bit uh, rotten, well, there's a, a bacteria that is very commonly found on rotten onions called cepatia, or or another one, pseudomonas. It's one or the other. I mean, there's there's two of these bacteria. One one or the other grows on rotten onions. Now, if you got that on your hands and then, you know, picked your nose and that bacteria gets into your, your, your respiratory tract, your body goes, oh, we don't need this. Get this out of here. Boom. Out. Well, me with CF, it gets in there and it latches on to that mucus and it doesn't go away. And that infection of that bacteria can literally be a matter of life and death. And so a few decades ago, they, they kind of made this realization and in that moment, they said, okay, from here on out, CF patients cannot be in the same vicinity. They, they, have, to, they have to remain, you know, the, the, the whole uh, COVID thing of like keep six feet apart. Yeah. That, that was, that's old news for CF patients. I mean, we've been living with that for our whole life. And so it's because if, I have, if I'm patient positive and I give it to, you know, Stephanie, who isn't, it could kill her. Yeah. So one of the hard parts with CF is that you can find community online, sure, but there's there's something to be said for not being able to be around the people that you identify with. And in doing this podcast, it it just I don't know, it just gave me more of that opportunity to connect in a really deep, meaningful way with folks that I otherwise might not have had the chance to do. Even though we're doing it through a screen, it, there's still like an element there that it, it, it afforded me this ability to do, which was really special. But the other thing that was real that I did not anticipate was how deeply meaningful it was to have that same connection with not the patients, but with the, the parents of a child with CF. Mm. Because those conversations, which there are quite a few in the show, gave me a completely different world view on what my mother went through in in caring for me with CF and it it just it really like opened my heart and opened my mind and opened my eyes up to the struggle that I don't think I ever really took the time to really think about what how hard it was for my mom how hard it was for my dad um and I would say like that was probably the most valuable piece of creating that project for myself was just making me feel a little bit more, um, just a little bit more appreciative and close to my mom for just how fucking awesome she is and how strong she is. And so, uh, which she, she's featured in the show a few times. And I gotta tell you that I, I always thought I got my humor from my dad, but Man, my mom is fucking hilarious. She is so funny, <laughs> and she doesn't even know it. It's like she she doesn't even try. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was quite an eye opening experience to work on this project and and to be a part of the CF community in that way. Uh, it it just it feels really. I'm really grateful to have been given the opportunity to take part in something like that. I I, I can only imagine too, Jeremy, how much they. They look up to you too like you you gotta be like i just put myself in uh in their shoes even though i know i couldn't really imagine it but somebody that has put it front and center that's been an advocate that has really 
not to pump up your tires too much, bud, but like you, you put this together. Like you, you're part of the the, the puzzle to put this together. And to, like, I know. I mean, I I live in an ICU world, so I I see a reasonable amount of CF. But even for me, just having a more of an understanding of and a, and more thinking about the experience that it is for our patients. That's that's through you. So just you know, I'm pumping up your tires too much here. But like, well done on on Thanks, all man. of this, brother. Yeah. Like it's it's a big deal. It, it really is. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think we could, it would be nice to hear more about Tricapta. And I, I must say, I, I, I'm, I'm learning here. Like, I didn't realize this, this was a, a new medication that has been brought to the CF world that has completely changed the game. So without having to, I don't want to put you in a precarious spot, but to your understanding, if you have a deep understanding, you could go into it like, how it works, when it came to be, uh, any major complications you're seeing from from the meds, and just hearing some stories too about like when, at least on the positive side for now, on when people had exposure to it and how it's changed their lives. Yeah. Well, you know what? So yeah, I mean, I if there's any uh, pharmacologists or uh, or you know docs listening right now. Uh, I feel like I got a pretty good grasp on it, but just uh, you know, just give me give me uh, give me a bit of a break here if I if I mess any of this up. But uh, it is so it, it's it's a wild drug. Like it it is literally a a, a, a marvel of of modern science. Um, the drug is what's called a, a, a gene modulator. So it's not a drug that treats the symptom of the disease, but rather it's treating at the source. It's not a cure. That's, that's a big point there. It, like, I still have CF. However, it's, it's acting, I mean, right now, as close as possible to some, you know, semblance of, you know, a cure to a degree. Um, but, but again, I really want to state it's not, it's not a cure at all. So, so you know, my whole life, I've, I've, I've been taking, you know, I take 40 pills a day my whole life. Um, various different treatments, you know, uh, salbutamol, Ventolin, I take it through a, a nebulizer. So it takes that liquid medicine, turns it into vapor. I breathe it in my lungs. That breaks up the, opens up the small airways so I can get the airway clearance. So that's, a, that's treating the symptom of the mucus in my lungs. When I eat food, I got to take digestive enzymes because my pancreas doesn't produce those enzymes. So, you know, I, I, I eat food, I take eight you know, Creon digestive enzymes, and that goes down, does the work to break the food down and, and help me absorb the nutrients. Again, treating the symptom of, you know, a lack of enzymes. Trikafta, well, here, let me say this first. CF is the result of a genetic mutation. The CFTR gene is, uh, is out of whack. And as a result, there's a, a, a particular protein in my body that is misshapen that one protein in a weird shape is the causes this trickle down effect to to present cystic fibrosis so what trikafta does is it goes down to the molecular level and it takes that protein and it folds it back into the correct shape so my genes are still you know i'm still i still presently have the cftr mutation but the drug is fixing the one protein that fucks up the entire system. And as a result, the way that CF presents is night and day compared to when I was not on the drug. So it's three little pills, two in the morning, one at night. And when I started the drug, my lung capacity, my lung function was hovering around 50%. My FEV one was like 50%. And uh, when I took the drug, and when most people with, with, the, with CF take the drug, you go through what's, what's called like the purge. And so for a couple of days, you are just, you are coughing up like what feels like decades old, just fossilized, gross ass, dank ass mucus. And it's coming up and coming up and coming up. And it's like, it, it, it's the most bizarre experience. And then 
that kind of subsides. And a couple of days in, my cough, which was, I mean, it was my cough, like made me who I was. Like if you go listen to old episodes of Sick Boy or like old interviews like that I did on, you know, CBC or the BBC, I'm, I'm just cough. I'm coughing up a storm. Like I, it, I'm coughing every, you know, who knows how many, like probably hundreds of times a day. Well, two days after taking the drug, cough disappears. It's gone. Two months into taking Trikafta, my lung function went from 50% up to 83%. The highest it had been in well over a decade. Uh, I think I mentioned it already on this recording. Uh, I went from 138 pounds up to 178 pounds. Like I started to pack on the pounds. And the reason for that is, is CF patients uh, who struggle with their, their weight and their malabsorption, the CF diet is, is basically high calorie, high fat. And they don't get, they don't give a hoot where you're getting those calories from. It's like, you want to pound Big Macs? Go for it. We don't care. As long as you're getting that fat, as long as you're getting those calories, that's, that's the way you have to eat. I ate that way for 34 years. Um, <laughs> to which is why I, I, I ballooned up like, I mean, like a normal human would, I guess, eating that, you know, double the amount of calories a normal human would need to eat in a day. So, so when that happened, I had to like completely shift my, my eating habits and start to eat like a regular human. One of the, one of the moments where it sort of clicked for me was I'm from Halifax. And if you've never been to Halifax, we have a, we we have a a big, uh, old, like historic fort in the center of the city overlooks the Harbor. It's called Citadel Hill. It's quite a steep incline. And I would sometimes take my dog and walk up to the top of Citadel Hill. Now, Prior to Trikafta, I would get to the top of that hill. I would be so out of breath, like completely winded. I have to take a break. And one day I took Donut, my dog, out for a walk and walked up the hill, got to the top of the hill and, and didn't even realize, like got to the top of the hill, kind of was walking around, taking in the sights. And then all of a sudden had to stop and go, oh, whoa, whoa, holy shit. I, I'm not even remotely winded. And this was, you know, this was like a week or two into taking the drug. It was like a, oh, wow, whoa, wow. Okay. This is like it. This thing works. Mm. Um, some of the other like really wild things, stats that I've heard about the drug is, um, there was a woman in the U S who does not have CF, but she had her baby in utero that did. I don't know if this was like legal or if this was some sort of trial, but she started taking Trikafta with the baby in utero. 98% of males born with CF are born without a vast deference. So that's like the highway between your balls and your urethra, or like how the sperm can get out. So like I'm sterile. If I wanted to have a kid, I'd have to do in vitro. Um, she took Trikafta while her baby was in utero and the baby was born with a full vast deference intact and showed zero signs of CF in the lungs um, just from taking this pill that, you know, this lady didn't even have it. So there's like, it's, it's, you know, if you had a kid today, born today and they had access to Trikafta, their life is going to be drastically different than the lives of everyone that came before that child. Um, And this is just the first kind of step. There were two other, two other uh, G modulators that came before Trikafta, but they didn't really work that great. They, you know, one worked for a very small subsect of, of the uh, genetic mutation of CF. There's over 2,000 different genetic mutations. Delta F508 is the one that I have, which is the most common uh, genetic mutation. So, you know, the first, the first iteration of this drug didn't work for, it worked for just a sliver of people. The second iteration of the drug worked, but it didn't quite do the full job when Trikafta came out, that was like the one that works for 90% of the population of people living with CF. This is just the first step in many that we need to see come so that we can take this drug and make it, you know, this type of drug and make it available to that 10% that are losing out. Plus the percentage of folks that have already had a lung transplant, because if you've had a lung transplant already, just due to red tape and bureaucratic bullshit, they don't qualify for the drug. Mm. Um, One of the other wild parts is that, you know, CF clinics across Canada, they're seeing a bunch of accidental births. So like I said about the the men (laughs) with, with, uh, with the vast deference, well, females, they also are uh, what what I've, I've come to learn is referred to as sub sterile. So they aren't sterile 
but they have they have mucus that line that that build up and line around the cervix, so it prevents. It's almost like a, a like a a, a built in IUD at birth. Yeah, like a barrier. Yeah, and so the trichafta strips that away, and now the, all these women with CF are like, Ta-da. "Whoopsie, I have a, I'm I'm pregnant now because as a result of the trichafta." So one of the big kind of shocks for a lot of folks is a, you know, the idea of birth isn't so daunting and is something that can happen and b i mean for myself like you know i thought again i thought i was going to be dead by 40 guaranteed the way my lung function was dropping from where it was to where i was a couple of years ago like i was on i was on track to see like end stage cf by now or next year or the year after now i'm looking at my lifespan and going holy shit i might be alive till i'm 80 kids were out of the question my entire life all of a sudden now i'm like I've got baby fever and I'm, I'm, you know, my partner just got tested genetically for, to see if she's a carrier, um, which, you know, if she carries the CF gene, even if, if she does, I, I, I think we'll probably go through with it anyway, because like I said, a, a kid born today with CF is not the kid born in 1988. Um, yeah. it is a, it's just a mind boggling drug that the power of it is, is, it's just jaw dropping. And, and from what I've heard from the, the, the chief science officer at CF Canada is that this, there has not ever in the history of medicine been a drug that has been so monumental when it comes to treating a chronic disease or a genetic disease. This is like, this has shot up to the top, the creme de la crop of like where we can go and what's possible for the future, which is super fucking exciting. It's as exciting as it gets, man. Like, that is, like I said, I, I remember seeing you. I, I can't remember. If, it must have been. I think it was probably the second time I landed with on Sick Boy. And you were you were struggling, actually. I remember in my head I was thinking, like, you were, you were having to take breaks because of your cough. You looked at, like you looked like you were down on your weight, too. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember just thinking to myself, oh, man, uh, like, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling Jeremy right now. I, I hope um, I hope this is just a like a or a, like a tough part of the road here, but yeah, I, and like looking at you now, I I just can't believe like I was to the point you're gonna think this is ridiculous, but when I saw one of your clips on social media, it was to the point where I'm like, is this some AI business going on here? Is this guy like yeah. you know? <laughs> You went on Chad TRT. What the hell? <laughs> or you went on Dale. I said, like, yo, give me an extra fifteen pounds What's of your muscle. Stack? <laughs> but uh, it's great to see. But I think it's fair to to also recognize how the the psychological impacts yeah. this has had on many of your 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 like folks with mm-hmm. CF. Maybe whether it's what you you the conversations you had on Breathless or for yourself, like what were what's some of the psychological impacts that probably most people wouldn't have foreseen? You know what? I'll tell you uh, by by telling you uh, this metaphor that a friend of mine said when we went out for beers, uh, and he. You know, we were, we were sort of acquaintances. You know, we, we weren't like, we didn't know each other that well, but he had just moved to town and we were, we were catching up, grabbing a beer. We started to become pretty close over the last like few months. And one of those first times we went out, he was like, hey, what's the deal? Weren't you supposed to be dead? Like what happened? What's the whole CF thing? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, totally. I, uh, you know, and I told him about Trikafta. And up to that point, every single person I ever told about this drug their response was the same, which is, holy shit, that's amazing. And, uh, and, it, and, and it is. And every time someone would ever say that, I would just say, you're right, it is. I just didn't really have the, the vocabulary to go down the road of like, it is, but, you know, it's, it's actually like really confusing and I'm kind of working through it with my therapist. I, I just didn't know how to like put it into perspective. And so, I, so you know, my friend Mikey says, uh, he says, where are you supposed to die? And I said, oh, I, I got trichaft and, he, and and he didn't say that's amazing. He said, holy shit, that's, that must be really challenging. And I was like, oh, 
Yeah, it is. And this is the metaphor that he said. <clears throat> You've seen um, Castaway. Do you remember that movie with, with Tom Hanks? Yeah. And, and uh, in the very beginning of the movie, Helen Hunt, his, 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 you know, his fiance to be, they're having this conversation before he gets on the plane. He's a FedEx pilot. He's going to get on a plane. And she says, you know, she's kind of like, so when are you going to pop the question about, you know, about getting married? And he's like, he pulls out this box. Obviously, he's got a ring in it. And he's like, I'm not going to give this to you now. I'm going to go on this trip. And when I come home for Christmas, I'll let you open it as a gift. And so she's like, holy fuck, yeah, finally. The guy's going to ask me to marry him. So he gets on the plane. Plane takes off. Plane crashes. And you know the movie. He's on a desert, deserted island for a number of years, eventually gets rescued. Okay. So a few years later, this guy gets rescued. He comes back to America. And he gets in a truck. And he drives to find Helen Hunt. He's going to go find his partner to be like, hey, I'm, I'm alive. I'm here. And so he drives and he drives and he drives and he finds this ranch and he knows that she lives there and he builds up the courage. He goes up and he knocks on the door and Helen Hunt opens the door and he's like, babe, I'm here. I know you thought I was dead, but I'm here. And her reaction is what? Her reaction is a mix of absolute elation and shock and surprise and, 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 and joy but also a, a mix of devastatingly confusing just shock because this is years later and she has, we come to find, moved on. She's got a husband. She has a kid. She has a family. She can't take him back into her life. That is what this drug is like. Trikafta is Tom Hanks. I'm Helen Hunt. And Trikafta comes and knocks on the door and says, hey, I'm your future that you thought was gone, that you grieved, that you did not think you were ever going to have. I'm here. How amazing is that? And my response is, I've moved on. I came to terms with the fact that I don't have a future. But the difference is, is that I don't have a choice in, in the way that Helen Hunt did. I have to bring Tom Hanks into my life. I have to bring that future in. I have to live that future. And yes, that is incredible. That is amazing. But also, there is so much behind the feelings of grieving the future you once thought you did not have. And then all of a sudden being told that you actually do have it. And, you know, you can look at that from the vantage point of like, you know, I never thought I'd retire. So like financially, I didn't live a very financially smart life, you know, very impulsive, spent money where I shouldn't have. Because to me, it was like, well, who gives a shit? I'm not going to be here. Like, I don't need to think about where I'm going to, you know, nest when I'm when I'm 75 and I decide to retire, um, you know decisions about again like the idea of not having children i'm 36 now and all of a sudden thinking about having a kid it's like damn you know if i have a kid now i don't know if i you know again financially not so ready maybe i gotta wait until i'm like you know 40 41 having a kid at 41 not, not no shade to anybody out there who's doing that but like to me it, that feels like ah uh, i it would have been nice to do this six years ago you know there's all these elements that come with it that are just so, uh, just so, so confusing. And not to mention the identity bit, right? It's like, mm. I was, I, fuck, my podcast is called Sick Boy. You know, like we got to rebrand. It's got it. Now nah, it's a not so sick boy. You know, it's like, <laughs> I was, I was the, I, that was who I was. It's who I, it's, it's how I, it's how I lived my life. And now all of a sudden there's this thing that comes in and not to say that this is like not a good thing. It's just, it's just not so cut and dry. It's, it's more confusing and, and, and challenging than one might think. I haven't de dealt with this, but I've heard from a lot of folks in the CF community that are also sort of dealing with like, I don't know any other word to use other than like a, 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 a form of survivor's guilt, you know? Mm -hmm. There's so many people that came before us that didn't even get to see the day that this drug hit the market. 
And now we do, we get to see it and we get to live it, but they didn't, you know, and their parents didn't get to see that for them. And that's hard. You know, I see that that's hard for some folks. So as beautiful as this gift is, it, it comes with a box of, uh, of confusion that I think a lot of us are just trying to figure out right now. And again, that is a big piece of what Breathless is trying to touch on. Uh, just the, the fact that, you know, it's not black and white. And there's, there's elements to this that, as beautiful as it is, it's also really cloudy and murky and confusing. Yeah. But, I mean, hearing you articulate it, Jeremy, I do feel that what you're saying makes a ton of sense. Especially, I mean, the one, like, obviously, none of us could be in your shoes and fully understand. But to me, when I hear the identity side, that's the one that super resonates with me. Like, if you think about your, your whole life, mm-hmm. it's been about... Like the, the podcast, the the news appearances, the so much of that was pre- almost predicated on having a, a shorter lifespan, and and what CF was was bringing, and so I I do I do I definitely hear you there, and then the survivor's guilt makes sense too. Obviously, that there's. A, tons of people that wouldn't that would have loved to been in this circumstance that haven't but yeah you 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 just the mindset where you live your life a certain way you you know as you say you don't think about retirement you don't think about going to florida and setting up shop there and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like it's it's uh it's an it and it's an interesting fascinating element to this that i guarantee 99 out of 100 people when when you mention it, don't think about. Yeah. And I, th- this is where I also, I think, Jared, like having that community has, has got to be super healing from that perspective too. And and like having somebody that you could actually talk to about that. Because I'm trying to think of even some relatable circumstances. Like, you, you know, cancer patients, mm-hmm. usually you think you're going to make it or you're not. Like, you know, it's not, it's not the same as living with something for, 34 years and all of a sudden thinking that the direction of that is completely changing. So this is, this is where I think that community piece must have been so like, it's so important. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. And again, like I'm just so grateful to be a part of that community and to be able to contribute, you know, and to be able to like help others contribute to that as well by, by, amplifying their voices and giving them a platform to share their experience because um you know although it might have been it might have been this thing that i fell into and just became a a sort of natural part of my career um there's there's so many other stories out there that are that are so valuable and so beautiful and so touching and so worthy of of like having a, a megaphone um and so to just be you know to be a part of something that that allows someone to step up to the stand and share their story it's like i mean ah, it's just so grateful like i just yeah uh, yeah i love it absolutely we're again we're up against it jared but i want to say um there's one thing that might not be might not be appropriate to say but i'm going to tell you anyway yeah, i love it yes please. yeah i know you're thinking about fatherhood i i could I'm a very instinctual person. Like I, I, I don't always wait for like the most clear data before re- rendering an opinion. <clears throat> but um, you'd be a fantastic dad. Oh, this, I know ex- it. this experience, this experience, this experience, yeah, <laughs> that experience of what you've gone through, hearing, hearing that side, even the the connection you made with parents, mm-hmm. um, the energy you'll bring. I, I I mean I'm just gonna tell you, you would regret not doing not having that opportunity. So yeah. if the opportunity presents, brother, I I I, I you know it, it's for you. I yeah. I see it. It's just my humble opinion. It might be inappropriate to say, but I see it, brother. I, not, I definitely not at see all. it. No, no, I appreciate that. I mean, if I can bring even fifteen percent of the uncle energy I've brought to my nephews to be <laughs> the dad. 
I know I'd be the best dad there is. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I was 40 years old for my last one. So, and All right, nice. it is a okay. it is a young man's game, but it uh, you could do it. You but could hey, do it when you're when you're when you're an old man like you and I, and looking the way we do. Oh, 40s 40s the new 20, man. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right. Listen, thank you so much again for joining us on uh, on the on the podcast. Where can people track you down? Where can they learn more about Breathless and anything that you care about right now? Yeah, at Jeremy Saunders, uh, Jeremy with an I-E instead of a Y on uh, Instagram. Uh, And Snack Labs uh, is the podcast uh, network that we've kind of been building up. So Breathless is on there along with uh, a host full of other really incredible uh, independent creators and, and organizations that that uh, we've been working with. So you can find that on Spotify or a- uh, Apple. And then of course, uh, sick boy podcast, uh, which we've been doing and continue to do, which is uh, which is a CBC show that you can find wherever you find podcasts or go on over to the CBC listen app. Boom. Goes a dynamite. Thanks, Jeremy. You're s- sexy and lovely as usual. And uh, it means a lot for you coming on, but love hanging out. Thank you so much for the opportunity.